So Bathsheba basically says uh, to David, uh, he's setting himself up as king. You better do something about it. And so David says, all right, easy, easy, easy. What we'll do is we will set up a special ceremony, and we will announce to the whole world that Solomon is going to be the king so that there's no dispute. And in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 34, that's exactly what they did. Here's what the verse says. Actually, let me start at verse 33. He said to them, Take your Lord's servant with you and set Solomon my son on my own mule and take him down to Gihon. There have Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow that trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon! So anybody could say that they were king, but man, if that shofar wasn't blown, all bets were off. Trumpet had to be blown to signify that this was the one and true king. Got it? Well, guess what? There's also a Bible verse in the New Testament. Uh, it's found in a couple of places, but Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, that talks about yet another king being put on the throne. I wonder who it could be. Well, why don't we have somebody read the verses? Revelation 4, verses 10 and and 11, anytime. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and have their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Hallelujah. So, the shofar that was blown, if you will, to bring in the kings of old. You will also hear this as it is announced throughout the whole world of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is all about Christ. Here's another one, the next reason for you. I'm not sure which reason we're up to, but I think now this is number four. Uh, reason number four, when the people in ancient Israel heard the blowing of the shofar, they were reminded of a, a story that had happened many, many years before that you would find in Genesis 22. Because Genesis 22, you'll remember, uh, in, in Genesis 22, God calls Abraham to bring his son Isaac up on the mount and sacrifice his son. Remember the story? And in Genesis 22, let me read for you now what happens in verses 12 through 14. Genesis 22, verses 12 through 14. Here's what the verses say. because uh, 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 Abraham is about to bring the knife down on Isaac, and God says, Stop. Do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now that I know you fear God, because you've not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. What did God provide? God provided a substitutionary sacrifice so that Isaac would not die. And when people in ancient Israel heard the ram's horn, because a, a, a ram is a male lamb, my friends, they said, ah, that's a reminder that God had provided a substitutionary sacrifice so that Isaac didn't have to die. Well, guess what? Christ is the fulfillment of this. Because in Jesus, God provided a substitutionary sacrifice for us so that we might not have eternal death, but have eternal life. Amen? Amen. And the scripture verse for that, I'll just give it to you, John 1, 29. And that's where John one day says, Behold, the Lamb, or the Ram, of God who takes away the sins of the world. I hear this. He's our substitutionary sacrifice. This is a reminder of him. The Feast of Trumpets is a reminder of him. You got the concept? A couple more reasons here. Next reason why the shofar was blown. It was blown because when the people heard it, they were reminded of the word that was given to them at Sinai, the Torah, if you 
will, the commandments of God. Shofar was blown in ancient times to remind the people of the word that had come forth unto them. And John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.14, here's what those verses say. In the beginning was that word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And that word, that was already God, by the way, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now you're starting to see a pattern here. Two more reasons, and then we'll be done. The next, why the shofar was blown, why the trumpet was blown, is that when the people heard the blowing of the trumpet in the days of old, it, it spoke to them of worldwide redemption. It told them that God was one. How is that fulfilled in Jesus? That's easy. Because it's found actually in the book of Titus. But, but the reason that I wanted to give you this verse is because, you know, I, look, and, and, and Pastor, I'm sure you deal with this too. We deal with a lot of folks who have a lot of problems trying to figure out the Trinity. Well, is the Trinity God in three persons? But God, I don't get this whole thing and how Jesus can be God, etc., etc. Guys, let me help you out here. God can do whatever he wants, anytime he wants. And, and God, in uh, Genesis 32, did something really, really cool. Um, because in Genesis 32, now you go to the book of Titus, I'm just referencing another book, but in Genesis 32, there's this real cool story about Jacob coming home from his uncle Laban's house and walking in the desert. And he's walking in the desert, he gets into a wrestling match with a man. Some of your Bible translations may say the word angel, I have a revelation for you, or I have a fact for you. Angel is the wrong word, the Hebrew says man. He had a wrestling match with a man, and after the wrestling match, he said, I'm gonna, he said, I'm gonna name this place Peniel, because it means that I have struggled and seen God, and I struggled with God face to face. So Jacob is acknowledging that God came down in the form of a man. And you know what? God loved doing that so much that 1,500 years later, God said, I'm gonna do that again. I'm going to fast ma manifest myself in the form of a man again. And he did. And this time he simply gave that man a name, Jesus. Wow. Titus 2.13, one of my favorite verses, because it shows you that Jesus is God in the flesh. I just need to proclaim that tonight. I might get thrown out of Raymond, but too bad. Christ is God in the flesh, folks. All right? I don't want to hear people say, well, he's only Messiah. He's only the Son of God. You better go to that third one. you got to proclaim his deity and divinity or all bets are off. Sorry, that's the way it works. Titus 2.13. Here's what the verse says. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. And this is actually verse 12. Uh, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. He's both. Jesus Christ. He's the fulfillment of the shofar being blown in ancient Israel that tells you that God is Last but not least, get ready because here comes the season. Last one. Reason number four. Why was the shofar blown? Because it was a reminder to the people in the days of old that one day they would all come together to be with God. The scripture verse that tells you that in the Old Testament is Isaiah chapter 27, verse 13. Isaiah 27, 13. And here's what that verse says. In that day, by the way, just to kind of help you out for future Bible students, whenever you read in the Bible in the Old Testament where it says, in that day, those three words, it's speaking of the end of days. <coughs> that term, in that day, is a last day's term. Here's what it says, Isaiah 28, 13. 27, 13. And in that day, a great trumpet will sound, and those who are perishing in Assyria, those who are exiled in Egypt will come up, worship the Lord in the holy mountain in Jerusalem. So, we know that the trumpet will sound on the Feast of Trumpets. That's when God said he sounded. And what season is Jesus coming back? Turn with me now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 16 and 17.
and you'll be able to figure this one out for yourself. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. Here we go. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet blast, the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive and left will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. My friends, it says that when Jesus returns, the trumpet is blowing. Therefore, the season must be the fall, because that's when the Feast of Trumpets occurs, according to God's schedule. The Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, this year, begins sundown on September 8th, which is soon. And Jews all over the world will be blowing the shofar at the Feast of Trumpets. Remember that I said that God gave you these feasts and festivals, gave the people this in Leviticus while they were still wandering in the wilderness. They couldn't celebrate them yet, but he gave it to them in advance so that they could get it through their minds and kind of practice and rehearse for the real thing. Each and every year when the trumpets are blown, we are practicing and rehearsing for the real thing. Because one day, one year, we don't know the day or the hour, but one season, the trumpet will be blowing again, but this time it won't be any man who's blowing it. This time it will be a trumpet that is blown from heaven on the heavenly call of Christ Jesus himself coming back. Amen? Let me close us in prayer, and then we'll do some question and answers tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. We thank you, Father, that indeed the Bible is all truly one book. It's not there's an Old Testament for Jews and a New Testament for Christians. Lord God, this is your holy word from beginning to end. And we thank you, Lord, that, that even more so than that, that this book is all about your plan of salvation through your Son, Christ Jesus, who came and shed his blood and died for us, Lord God on the cross. And Father, I pray that anyone here tonight who may not have the assurance of that would spend time with, with me or with Tony or with anybody else afterward asking some questions and wanting to know more. For he tells us in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. In other words, nobody gets to heaven except through me and me alone. Lord, I want to thank you for that. We give you all praise tonight in Christ Jesus' name. And everybody agreed and said, Amen. Amen. Amen.